The OBS devs have been hard at work introducing new features and updates for OBS Studio. I talk about this every time they release updates and we have a new release candidate. Yes, release candidate. I know it's not release client. I say things wrong on purpose sometimes and then they just stick. I got it. And I wanted to talk about some of the features, but there's one specific feature that I think a lot of people are already latching onto as being the saving grace for music streaming and DMCAs. And this is not the case. You will still get punished if you think you're going to use this to circumvent some things. And I really think we need to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it right after a word from this video sponsor. If you're watching this video or any video on my channel, really, that probably means that you enjoy learning. Maybe you even want to learn about learning. You can do just that with the documentary series Redesign My Brain on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream has thousands of educational and documentary titles ready for you to binge all holiday season. If you want to dig into learning about the internet, check out How to Go Viral, an art historian's analysis of how recent cultural icons became so popular. Plus, they've partnered with Nebula, the service I work together with my fellow education creators on to produce even better and more thorough content, to sweeten the deal with a two-for-one streaming bundle. Not only that, but they've extended their holiday sale. For a limited time, you can get both the massive library of educational and documentary content on CuriosityStream, as well as all of the awesome content from us indie creators for just $11.79 per year. That's less than $1 per month. Treat yourself this holiday season and spend some of your quarantine time working out those brain muscles by heading on over to curiositystream.com slash epos and sign up to support my channel. I'm Epos Vox, your stream professor, and let's quickly cover some of the overall new features and additions added to the new OBS Studio 26.1 RC that we're testing here that most of them I've already talked about so we can just kind of cover. Like for example, Virtual Camera was added to Mac OS and Linux and Release Candidate 2 supposedly fixes it to fix uh, Virtual Camera on the M1 Macs as well. OpenBSD support was added. The ability to ingest captions coming in through DeckLink capture devices are now supported, so that's pretty cool if you do anything with captions. Hardware decoding options have been added for Stinger transitions, however, this will not benefit most of you because there is no hardware decoding for Stingers with Alpha, which means the transparency. If you have a Stinger transition and it shows transparency as it appears on screen and then goes away, that cannot currently be supported at all with hardware decoding, so you're not actually going to benefit here. This is purely if you just assigned a normal static kind of video as your Stinger then you get some performance gains here, but most people aren't gonna see a benefit from that. I kind of freaked out in my Discord server when I saw that because I thought it was a big deal. It's not actually a big deal. They finally added an option in the right-click filter menu to duplicate filters. Uh, so if you are wanting to add multiple of the same filter to do different things, for example, I sometimes do that with EQs. Like I'll do one as a like notch to filter out my CRT noise, but then I'll add an actual EQ to the voice as well. Things like that, they finally added that. And they also, added the ability to copy and paste individual filters between sources, which was not possible before. You can only do all or nothing. Now you can actually just move individual filters, which is something I have been wanting as well. The big feature that we're talking about here today, though, is the multiple audio track streaming that you can now do with Twitch. This was introduced when Twitch introduced their Twitch soundtracks feature, which allowed you to stream certain music to Twitch, but you can't have it in your VODs or your clips because they didn't get the licensing for that music. They only got the performance licensing which means that you can only stream it, but it doesn't cover your VODs or your clips or anything because I, I don't know why. There's a whole Devin Nash video. Actually, he has multiple videos at this point. I will have linked in the description below. If you're not caught up on the whole DMCA, Twitch versus RIAA scene, Twitch is fighting the record industry right now and not succeeding, which by the way, MTV fought the record industry and couldn't really make any headway. So I don't know why anyone expects Twitch to be able to other than Amazon. And I don't think Amazon cares that much. But regardless, in order to compensate for their flawed licensing that they got for the music here, Twitch introduced an OBS plugin for the soundtrack feature, which allowed you to send multiple audio tracks to Twitch. So you'd have a live audio track, which played the music you had the license to to play live, and then the VOD audio track, which had only everything that you had the license to do not live. And then of course it was up to you to actually wrap with the plugin, the plugin handled all the audio routing for you, but it was up to you to actually separate that and stick to it. OBS has now turned around and turned what this plugin did into a feature in that now in the advanced encoder settings, you can now enable a Twitch audio track, a Twitch VOD track, which uses uh, audio track two. And so you actually send two different streams of audio to Twitch. You have track one, which is your live stream, and then track two, which is the VOD. 
This way you can play some of that soundtrack music, or if you licensed music yourself and you only have the performance rights, you have you can stream that on track one and then not have it on track two so that your VOD is safe. However, this requires you to manually separate out your audio. And if you're already like looking at this and wondering how the heck do I do any of that, that's part of the problem is you will need either a virtual cable software or something like the GoXLR where you have separate devices that your audio is playing to. So on the GoXLR, for example, there's a dedicated music device. It's a virtual device, but a music device that you then play your music to. You still hear it in your headphones and it still goes to the final mix, but you can add those devices individually and then use the advanced audio properties in your mixer here and change the checkbox of which device goes to which track. So for example, you could have your music track going to track one, but not track two, so that it goes to live, but doesn't go to your VOD. Now, there are lots of tutorials up online for voice meter, for virtual audio cables, for things like that, as well as the GoXLR. Uh, you can check those out, but this is kind of, the multi-track audio is kind of the bare bones of why a lot of people wanted OBS Studio in the first place compared to classic OBS. Um, and I do have a video in my OBS Masterclass about everything to do with the audio mixer here and the multiple audio tracks and stuff like that, so I'll have that linked in the video description if you want to get caught up to speed. The reason this feature is not as big of a deal as people are making about it is because a lot of people are suddenly hopping on the bandwagon of cool. Now I can get away with streaming my favorite radio music and it won't be in the VOD, so I won't get DMCA'd. This is not true, period. This is not the case. Twitch is already working to appease the RIAA and you know, I say too many A's there, RIAA, and you know, keep everything running smoothly as much as possible and so they already have the tools to take down your stream while live and give you a DMCA while live if you're trying to do this to avoid copyright issues and stream music you don't have access to or licenses for. You can't just get away with it. You may not get a DMCA immediately, but at some point in time, they will be able to DMCA you while live and take down your stream. In fact, that was the whole reason Twitch's content detection tools were implemented in the first place back in the Justin TV days was the Fox television network wanted the ability to take down streams that were streaming their TV shows and take them down off the air immediately. They have the ability to do that. YouTube has had the ability to do that. Twitch is going to get the ability to do that. So you cannot use this to stream your own music. I mean, you can, but you're still going to, it's still going to bite you in the butt for it. You're still going to end up with claims for it. And if anything, this feature coming out in OBS and people abusing it to stream content they don't have licenses to will result in that tool that allows Twitch to DMCA live stream and take down content. It will, if anything, just be a catalyst to make that tool become more readily available to content holders and become more widespread used by Universal and Sony and all of that because they will want to crack down on this even more because the RIA is clearly trying to take away Twitch's safe harbor here and put claims and takedowns on as much content as possible and if streamers start using this as a way to kind of avoid that, that's going to give them even more ammunition, even more firepower to start taking down more streams on Twitch. You don't want to do this, period. I, I don't know what else to say. I was flabbergasted when I saw that they released this feature in the first place in OBS and then that people were already making videos about how you can use this to not get DMCA'd and still listen to your radio music. If you do not have a license for the music you are streaming, you cannot stream it, you cannot use it in your alerts, you can't use it in your scenes, nothing. That's how copyright works. That's in an essence how it's always going to work. You're never going to get around that. And just because X site shows up and is the new kid on the block and doesn't have rules applied to it yet, doesn't mean you're going to get away with it in the long run. And so I'm just saying this now. This new feature is pretty cool, and I like that Twitch supports multiple audio streams. You will actually be able to use this for certain things like multi-language stuff, or if you do have music in your streams that you have a license for, and you just don't want it in your VODs so people can focus on the game more and, you know, watching the VODs or whatever, or you don't want your alerts playing in your VODs so you can export them to YouTube more easily or what have you. This is a useful feature for that, but it is not a feature that allows you to stream whatever music you want that you don't have rights to without the licenses, period. It just doesn't. So I, I wanted to, I covered the features as they were. I actually bought an M1 Mac mini that I'm going to be covering for streaming and things like that as well. But I wanted to make this dedicated video to put my foot down and be like, no, you can't use this feature for this. They are already working with the companies to develop the tools to take down your stream while live. And those of you who are deliberately avoid, you know, bypassing the rules that are already being set into place and the ways that they're being enforced already, 
You're going to be first on the chopping block when someone needs to be made an example of. And I won't feel bad for you. Neither will Twitch. Neither should anyone else. Hope this video was helpful for you. Hope I made it clear. If not, leave me your questions in the comment section down below. Better yet, join us on Discord at eposfox.gg slash Discord. Uh, since I am moving and tearing down on my studio and things like that, I'm not super responsive at the moment to comments. But our people over on Discord will help you out as well. Discord.gg slash eposvox. I don't know what I just said. Both of them are valid. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Go check out the release candidate for yourself, primarily if you need virtual camera on Mac or Linux. Um, most of the other features you don't really need right now, but if you want to test it out, support the community and the development, of course, or if you want to test out this VOD feature for the appropriate uses, check it out linked in the description. I'll see you next time.